Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. When death comes, he cannot be denied, and life must depart with him, leaving behind an emptiness and a void. That's for most people. There are a few, a resourceful few, who have been able to get around it. Our mystery drama, Pharaoh's Daughter, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Jack Grimes and Joan Shea. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Carpe diem, seize the day, said the Roman poet, to which we might add, seize the hour, the minute, the second. There are those who in one great intuitive flash can see the entire workings of the universe. It is a gift given to great artists, great poets, great composers, and great crooks. We're in a large city. It is rather late at night. The doorman of an exclusive dining place whistles up a cab. Three extremely well-dressed people get in. One is a rather distinguished-looking gray-haired gentleman. The second is a stunningly attractive woman, just entering middle age. The third is tall, dark, and uh, he looks extremely competent. You know, Arthur and I despise taxis, Frank. Benjamin had to have the night off. His mother died. Oh, that was inconsiderate of her. I don't think you should talk this way in front of... Whom? He probably means me, lady. (laughs) Your friendly taxi cab driver. You know, I'm one of the, uh, (laughs) plebeians. Well, where do you uh, aristocrats want to go? Take us to number 87 Barclay. Let me help you, Arthur. Thank you. Lenore. Thank you, Frank. Mr. Drake, be Mr. Arthur K. Drake? Cabby, Mr. Drake is not in the mood for conversation. Oh, right on. Arthur, darling, are you all right? You haven't said a word. What's wrong? Uh, Frank, look at him. He's so pale. He's breathing hard and, and, and sweating. Arthur, you okay? Hey, the, uh, the old gent don't, don't look good. Something's happened to him. Arthur, I have your pill. Just open your mouth. Uh, you, you want us to drive to a hospital? The motion of the cab is upsetting him. Pull over to the curb. Uh, but, but do as you're told. Oh. oh, this is more than just an ordinary attack. This guy needs a doctor. Oh, Frank, I'm frightened. He's not responding to his pill. He'll be all right. No, no, he should respond immediately. I still think he'll come out of it. He can't die now. He can't. Not with the Fleischman deal unsigned and the Carruthers merger unresolved. Mr. Drake. Oh, sorry. Mr. Drake. Arthur. Arthur, speak to us. Lenore, he... He's dead. What do you mean, he's dead? He... He's dead? Wait a second. I, I took a first aid course in, in, in resuscitation. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. You get behind the wheel, drive the cab to the nearest hospital. It's down the boulevard to Henderson and turn right. You can't miss it. He's not breathing. Move, move, move over and give me some room. I, I don't hear nothing. He needs both compression and mouth to mouth. Hey, what are you waiting for? Either get us to the hospital or find a phone and get an ambulance. Dead. Yeah. Dead. Uh, yeah. Now, you never say die. Yes, he's dead. What are we going to do, Frank? Go for crying out loud, get help! Do you trust me, Lenore? Yes. Will you do as I tell you without asking questions? Of course. What's the matter with you two? The first thing we have to do is kill him. Kill who? This cab driver. Is it necessary? I don't believe he's the type who can be bribed. Hey. Are you people crazy? You see anybody about? No, the street seems deserted. Hey, what do you want to do with that gun? Are you crazy? Everybody will hear the shot. What happened to him? This pistol has a silencer, my dear. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm sure he's no great loss to anyone. But did we have to kill him? Yes. 
Since I'm old Arthur's bodyguard as well as his personal secretary, this is the stroke of luck. It provided us with a weapon just when we would need one. But what are we going to do right now at this moment? Well, both your late husband and our talkative cab driver are safely in the back seat. Hand me the cabbie's cap. Now you get back in there with them. Back in there? What harm can they do you now? Up the street is a phone booth. I must make a telephone call. To whom? To someone I can trust. Frank, My I... dear, the stakes consist of the entire Arthur Drake fortune. You may be apprehensive and uncomfortable for the next 20 minutes. But it'll be worth it. Yes? Oh. What so? Uh, is the... The guy in? Which guy? The, the pawnbroker. I'm the pawnbroker. No kidding. I've never seen a lady pawnbroker before. What did you have in mind? Uh, well, I, I, I got this ring. Oh, everybody's got rings. It's got a diamond in it. Oh, they all have diamonds. Where'd you get it? Where'd I get it? What kind of a question is that? It's a legitimate question. What do you think? I bought it. Would you happen to have the sales slip? I bought this ring 20 years ago. Uh-huh. Well, I just remembered. I didn't buy it. Someone give it to me as a present. Excuse me. Hey, uh, where are you going? In the box. Well, what for? Well, yeah, I got better light. I got to examine the ring, don't I? Well, uh, police? Yeah, uh, uh, this is Mrs. Molly Gordon. Yeah, I got a shop on East Tenth. You know the ring we're supposed to keep an eye open for? I belong to the cab driver got killed? Well, a fella just walked in with it. Where'd you get the ring, Eddie? I found it, Lieutenant Davis. Where? In my pocket. How did it get into your pocket, Eddie? Oh, gee, I, I, I don't know. You don't have any idea at all? You know me, Lieutenant. I get drunk. Well, I... I, I shouldn't, but I do. I, I get a few drinks in me. Yeah, plus a few pills. Come on, the ring, Eddie. Well, when I get into a certain state... Don't stop now, Eddie. That's all I know. I, I just get high and then... And what, Eddie? I just can't remember what I did. Should we refresh your memory? Why, well, that, that'd be great. You killed a cab driver named Joe Paulson. What? What are you saying? Why would I kill him? You took his cash plus the ring. How did I kill him? With a gun. That, that's impossible. You know me, Lieutenant Davis. I never worked with a gun. Until now. I don't even have a gun. Oh, yes, you do, Eddie. We found it in your apartment. A gun? A thirty-two, the gun that killed Paulson. Yeah, but I, I, I don't remember. If you killed him when you were high, would you remember? Well, no. no. Well, that's it, Eddie. You got the ring and the gun. Yeah, yeah, the ring and the gun. Now, do you want to make a statement? I don't remember killing him, Lieutenant, but... <laughs> If you've got all this evidence, I guess I did. Lieutenant, that Joe Paulson case, it's getting very complicated. Oh, no, it isn't, Sergeant Gomez. Look, I was down to the taxi garage. It's I... over. Well, how, how could it be over? Sometimes you're lucky and you get something for nothing. What are you talking about? You get a case that solves itself. Oh, how in the world We've it... got the killer of Arthur Drake and the cabbie. It's Eddie Judson. Eddie Judson? Oh, you can't be serious. Look, he had the gun. He was trying to hawk the cabbie's ring. Oh, no, no. I, I don't believe it. He signed a statement. You mean he confessed? Well, he didn't. He didn't. Come on, Lieutenant. When he gets into a kind of drunken high, you know. Yeah, I know. Lieutenant. And in that state, he doesn't know what he's doing. Even in that state, I don't believe Eddie Judson would kill anybody. But the gun and the ring. Solid evidence. It's not his style. Look, Al, It's I... a quiet hustle as far as he's concerned. A little con game here and there, some quick 
Flim Flam, if he's real hungry, he might shoplift. Sure, all this is when he's himself, but he gets kind of high on booze and drugs, and he becomes a complete other personality. He didn't do it. Now, come on, Al. Lieutenant, like I say, I've been to the taxi garage. Things there don't hang together. Now, look, I'm going to drop a name on you. Now, why don't you relax? Arthur K. Drake. Yeah? So what? Now, a woman, obviously Drake's wife, and a guy who fits the description of Drake's personal secretary were the last fares to ride in Joe Paulson's cab. Which means what? Things don't add up. Why don't they? Joe Paulson was wearing a ring. This ring plus his cash was taken from him by some hood who killed him with a thirty-two caliber. Well, maybe that's what it looks like. The ring plus the murder gun are both in possession of an old friend of ours, Eddie Judson. Eddie Judson is a harmless nut. Would you forget it? But don't you want to know what I it's found out? It's a waste of time. Oh, okay. But I don't believe you got a confession from Eddie. You want to see it? No. No, I want to see Eddie. Well, how are they treating you, Eddie? Oh, not bad, Sergeant. You know me, I get along with everybody. Hey, uh, when are they going to hold my trial? Eddie, hmm? did you kill that cab driver? Yeah, well, sure. Uh-huh. Tell me how. Uh, how? Yeah, well, I, 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 I don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know? I don't remember. Then it's possible you didn't kill him. Oh, no, no. That, that ain't possible at all. I, I killed him, all right. If you don't remember, how can you be so sure? Well, they found a ring on me, didn't they? Eddie, would you put your hand on the Bible and swear you killed that cabbie? Everybody says I killed them. I mean, well, you fellas, you, you've always been good to me. Could someone be trying to frame you? Well, you guys wouldn't do that to me. I look on you as my friend. No, no, I, I didn't mean cops. I mean, I mean someone else. Well, Sergeant, I got no enemies. Why would anybody want to hang a frame on me? <sighs> okay, Eddie. Okay. Mr. Hopkins? Yes? Come in, come in. I'm a, a police detective. Here are my credentials. Sergeant Albert Gomez. Well, won't you sit down, Sergeant? Now, how may I help you? I would like to speak with Mr. Arthur Drake. I'm sorry, Mr. Drake is out of town. Oh. Well, perhaps Mrs. Drake could help me. May I ask why? I'm investigating a murder. Oh, indeed. That sounds grim. How can Mrs. Drake be of assistance? Suppose I discuss that with Mrs. Drake. Certainly. Excuse me a moment. Lenore? Yes, Frank? A police detective about the cab driver. I thought you had arranged that rather neatly. They do have a confession from the killer. I don't know what this man wants. But what does he say he wants? He wants to talk to you. All right. We shall give him that opportunity. Please, be very careful. Frank, I know how to talk to police officers. I know exactly how to handle him. The web has been spun. Its purpose? Well, the spider weaves it to catch the unwary fly. But at this rather early point in our story, we have not yet established who is the spider, and who is the fly. That is the general purpose of second acts. And I shall bring you this one in just a few moments. Money. Say what you like, but money is the great emancipator. Money emancipates you from so many petty worries. And a great deal of money emancipates you from practically any kind of care. Mrs. Arthur K. Drake, Lenore, was born to great wealth and married into fantastic wealth. Wealth, it colors your outlook on life 
and uh, gives you a certain attitude toward people. Would you like to know how Eleanor of Aquitaine or Catherine de' Medici spoke to their serfs and retainers? The next few minutes should prove a revelation. You are Sergeant Gomez of the police. Yes, Mrs. Drake. My husband was instrumental in choosing your Commissioner Sellers. Uh, Salters, ma'am. Uh, well, whatever. Now, what is it you require of me? Some information. <laughs> what information could I possibly have for the police? Several nights ago, a cab driver was murdered. Well, they're a surly lot, as you well know. His bad manners may have angered someone beyond all endurance. You, your husband, and another gentleman, Mr. Frank Hopkins, rode in that man's cab just before he was killed. That's impossible. Uh, are you saying you did not ride in a cab driven by Joseph Paulson on the night of... I don't ride in cabs. I despise them. We always use our own motor car. I see. Well, I should like to speak with Mr. Drake. That would not be convenient at this time. I'm told he's out of town. When is he expected back? I was not aware that Mr. Drake is accountable to the police. Are you uh, finished here? Not quite. Good day. I know my way uh, out. One moment, please. Hmm? How much money do you make? That's a matter of public record. You could look it up. How would you like to leave the police force? I never thought about that. And work for me. In what capacity? A confidential, intimate capacity. Mm -hmm. How would Mr. Drake like that? Well, we needn't concern ourselves about Mr. Drake. And why not? Whatever you're making now, I'll double it. I don't think so. Isn't the offer attractive enough? Oh, oh it's, it's very attractive. But, you know, now, now I know who you remind me of. Yes? Pharaoh's daughter. Really? A legend says that Pharaoh's daughter became enamored. Enamored? An unusual word for a police officer. Now, some of us are fairly well educated. She, she fell for, does that make you see it more clearly? A Hebrew slave. She summoned him to her tent. And after he left, he was immediately speared to death. How exciting. Thank you for your most generous and exciting offer. Will you notify us when Mr. Drake returns? Oh, uh, certainly. As I said, I know my way out. Lenore, why did you talk to him like that? He amused me. You shouldn't have. I thought you told me everything would go smoothly. Why did you deny we were in that camp? Well, it seemed like the smart thing to do. Who could have told him that? The doorman... The doorman at Luigi's restaurant. Oh, Frank. Well, we have to kill him, too. Or we cannot depopulate the city. Yes? This is Mr. Hopkins. Now, I'll speak with Mr. Townsend. Yes, Mr. Townsend, Mr. Drake was called out of town on a sudden emergency. But he authorized me to tell you to go ahead with the merger. Thank you. Goodbye. It worked. We can keep doing this. For how long? Indefinitely. Arthur always tried to pose as a man of mystery. Well, he's going to become more and more mysterious as time goes on. I just wish... What do you wish? I wish you hadn't irritated that detective. Well, if he bothers you, kill him. Lenore, you just don't go around killing people. The daughters of Pharaoh do. What are you talking about? You may have to. He may become very, very bothersome. But why don't we wait and see? I would do it now. He will pry and probe, disturb the dust. But you have no way of knowing that he intends to. I have a woman's way of knowing, Frank. These things are best done early. I'll just get Davis to move on this. I'll get the evidence and... To dump it into his fat lap. Hello? Hello, is Jim there? Yes, yes, Jim. He was the doorman at Luigi's restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, well, I want to talk to him. What do you mean? Is that a fact? Well, no, 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 never mind. Thank you. Well, 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 what do you know about that? Well, Al, I 
don't know why I should be impressed. The doorman, Lieutenant, the doorman at Luigi's. He said to me that he remembered putting Mr. Drake, Mrs. Drake, and this Mr. Hopkins into a cab that night. Yeah? Yeah, so I got to see Mr. Drake. You went to see Arthur Drake? Uh, Mr. Drake is an ordinary citizen. Look, a guy with a quarter of a billion, give or take, is not an ordinary citizen. I was under the impression that this was a democracy. Well, it is and it, it isn't. Anyhow, he wasn't in. Huh, that's a relief. I spoke to the wife. So what did she say? She said she wanted me to become her boyfriend. Oh, don't go flaky on me, yeah. What she said that I found interesting was that they hadn't taken a cab that night. All right, so if she said that, then it's true. But it can't be true. Why not? Because that would contradict the testimony of the doorman, Jim Perry. Jim told me he put them in a cab. Well, he might have been wrong. So I called back there this afternoon, and guess what? He's gone. I mean, gone. He took off. To where? I don't know. He told Luigi he came into some money and could afford to quit. <laughs> so why couldn't that be the truth? I called his rooming house, and the landlady said he left, like that, and no forwarding address. You want to tell me this is all coincidence? Hell, my boy, all this messing around with the Drakes can only embarrass you. But I'm investigating a murder. What murder? The murder of cab driver Joseph Paulson. The case is closed. We already have the murderer. I don't believe it. Sergeant, what's gotten into you? Do you really and truly and sincerely believe that poor Eddie Judson is the killer? Yeah. Why? Why should Mrs. Drake deny that she and her husband and this other guy were in that cab when Jim, the doorman, told me otherwise? Well, there's all this matter. Look, I got an assignment for you. Uh, uh, l Lieutenant, Lieutenant, give me a little more time on this case. What case? There is no case. All right. All right, but be advised. I'll work it on my spare time. Oh, well, why don't you let well enough alone? <laughs> No, no, Mr. Drake does not approve of that acquisition. Well, not at this time. Oh, yes, he will certainly let you know. Mm, goodbye. Who else is on the line, Norton? Oh, very well. Put him on. Yes, what did you say your name was? Oh, yes, yes. No, no, Mr. Drake has a policy about publicity. He shuns it completely. Under no conditions would he agree to an interview. Well, sir, there's no law that compels him to, is there? Good day. Yes, Frank, you're doing very nicely. He did die at the right time, didn't he? Considering that he intended to divorce me and fire you. He had no intention of firing me. He would have found out about those bonds sooner or later. Why talk about that now? Uh, have you arranged for my little matter? Lenore, are you sure that... What is the point in having power if you can't use it? Well, power... Power is to decide the fate of a company, an industry, perhaps the economy of the nation. But what you want is just some personal thrill. That's what power is to everybody. Personal thrills. It all depends on what thrills you. I want that detective killed. And it's more than a whim. He's dangerous. Well, if I can't convince you... I'd like... To give him another chance. Oh, I wish you would. Forget... Oh, no, no, no. You see, Pharaoh's daughter has her slave killed after he leaves her tent. What are you doing? I'm calling Sergeant Albert Gomez to give him another invitation. Hello? Is this Sergeant Gomez? Yes. Well, this is Pharaoh's daughter. Well, hi. The job is still open. Really? I thought we might even triple your salary. Uh, I'm afraid I'll just have to refuse. Why? There's no future in it. On the contrary, it's a beautiful future. It's not quite the one I had in mind. Well, no harm in asking. Now, by the way, is uh, Mr. Drake back in town? No. I'll keep trying. Goodbye. Why did you do that? It amused me. You did it because you want to be in a position where we have no choice but to kill him. That's possible. I can put off reporters. I can put off clients. I can say Mr. Drake is indisposed, but I can't keep stalling the police. Eventually, I will have to produce Mr. Drake. 
And I can't do that. Sergeant Albert Gomez is your problem. He's the only curious policeman. Get rid of him. Just like that? I'm sure you can devise something plausible. I'll have to. Oh, hi, Sergeant. Oh, hello, Jerry. Fill her up, huh? Yeah. Uh, how's he take the business, Albert? <laughs> it's like everything else. Yeah, well... Ow! Ow! What's the matter, Jerry? Across the street, them guys with masks and loose grocery store. It's a stick-up. Jerry, run inside your office, phone the precinct. Quick, officer needs help. Arm robbery in progress. Yeah, yeah, I've got you. Be careful, Al. Halt! Halt! I'm a police officer! Help! Help! No! No! I, uh, I see them guys, Lieutenant. Uh, two or three maybe in loose grocery. They, they, they was holding up the joint. All right, what'd they look like? Uh, well, they were men wearing masks. Uh, I said to call you as he stepped out of the car, and well, all of a sudden they start shooting at him as if... Uh, well, as if what? I, I don't know. It might sound crazy. Just tell me. As if they were waiting for him. Wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I like... They were waiting for him because they, well, he no sooner stepped out of his car when it seems like they they shoot from all over. What do you mean from all over? You said the stick-up guys were in the grocery across the street. Yeah, yeah. Might have been my imagination, but it seemed to me the bullets was coming from every which way. You know what I mean? No. Like, uh, they were waiting for him. Why would anybody be waiting for him? I don't know. It looked like he'd been set up. Why would anybody want to set up Al Gomez? I said I don't know. I just say that's how it looked. You know what I say? I say you've been watching too many movies. But even as he says it, a tiny ache of doubt begins to gnaw at Lieutenant Davis. First, there was a holdup and a killing of a cab driver, which Sergeant Gomez insisted was not really a holdup. Now... A holdup of a grocery store in which Sergeant Gomez is killed and might not be a holdup either. The lieutenant is a hard man to convince, but once you get him in motion, well, uh, that's the concern of Act Three, when I return in just a moment. Habits of a lifetime, how little we realize that they hold us in virtual servitude. For an entire career, Detective Lieutenant Davis has been strictly a book officer. Go by the evidence. Be guided by what exists, not by what might. The ultimate conservative, you could call him. Completely relaxed, comfortable, portly. But now, something bothers him. He's not sure what. Lieutenant Davis. Oh. Yeah, what does he want? Okay, okay, I'll go over there. (laughs) As if I don't have enough trouble. Oh, thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, Nice of you to come by. Now, what do you want to see me about, Eddie? It's awful about Sergeant Gomez, huh? Yeah. I heard it on the radio. I keep remembering what he told me. About what? He said to me, Eddie, would you swear on a Bible that you really killed that cab driver? Well, what about it? Well, you you know, Lieutenant Davis, when somebody, when a friend of yours is killed or dies, you you, kind of feel very close to, to God. And? And? Well, I, I couldn't put my hand on a Bible and swear that I killed that cab driver. Eddie, you mean you want to change your story? I don't want to make it inconvenient for you, Lieutenant. There isn't a person I admire more than you. Come on, come on, get to the point, Eddie. A friend of mine was in to see me. Oh. I'm not a pigeon, Lieutenant. That's something I never done. And she says to me, Eddie, how could you have killed that cabbie when you were with me? You mean you got an alibi? Well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? 
If she's going to take the stand to clear me, the DA is going to check her out. And you see, she's on the lam. Yeah, but if she can put you in the clear, she... I told her I got friends on the cops. We are friends, ain't we, Lieutenant? Well, sure. I, I mean, there's nothing personal in this. We we need each other, so I figure you can get me clear as long as I'm innocent. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, what am I going to do with you? And so since I found out I didn't do it, I've been trying to think. Maybe, maybe Sergeant Gomez was right. Maybe I am being framed. All right, Eddie, I'll look into it. Lieutenant, we've already spoken to a police officer. Only unfortunately he's been killed, Mrs. Drake. Oh, really? The other night, trying to prevent a holdup. Oh, how awful. Oh, Frank, that nice young detective, what was his name again? It mm. had an ethnic ring to it. Gomez. Oh, yes. I'll, uh... I'll have to make sure I have everything right. Now, you say you didn't ride in Joe Paulson's cab. We rode in no one's cab. That's a fact, Mrs. Drake? Oh, yes. And Mr. Drake could corroborate it if he was here. Well, of course. But he's out of town. Uh, yes. Is he expected back shortly? Well, one never knows with Mr. Drake. But just for the sake of the record, do you suppose Mr. Drake could send us a deposition? A deposition? To what effect? Well, just a signed statement saying that he either did or didn't ride as a passenger in Joe Paulson's cab. Or any taxi cab on the night of October 28th. Oh, that's easily accomplished. Uh, is there anything else we can uh, do for you? No, I don't think so, Mrs. Drake. I'm, I'm afraid the police have taken up too much of your time as it is. Uh, it's sure nice of you to get me out of jail for a breath of fresh air, Lieutenant. We're here on business, Eddie. I want you to think. About what? Here. Right under this lamppost is where Joe Paulson was killed. Uh-huh. Do you remember being here that night? I told you. I, I, I got on one of them highs. I, I don't remember a thing. Eddie, that's not good enough. You've got to remember. Please, Lieutenant. If you killed him, you killed him here. And if you want me to go out on a limb for you, you'll have to cooperate. Otherwise, it's the rest of your life in jail. You're going to remember, Eddie, everything about that night. I'll try. Honest, I will. I was over to her apartment. Yeah, where's that? I told you, she's on a lamb. I'm not a rat. Where's the apartment? It's around here, but don't ask me exactly where. I'll stay in jail first. Come on, Eddie, come on. She's one of them college kids. We're up in her pad. They're turning on pretty good. I guess she goes for all the guys and kind of her old man. He never even spent any time with her. Eddie, tell me what happened right here. Yeah, right, right here. I'm, I'm trying to hold on to it, Lieutenant. I'm trying to capture it. Uh, yeah, well, we, we were sailing pretty high, she and I, and it, there was a shot. We hear a shot. A pistol shot? A, a shot, you know, and she says, get out of here, Eddie. Don't get mixed up. And she pushes me out of the pad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Eddie? It's, it's, it's kind of hazy. Hey, I, I'd had too much of you. I remember walking down the street, and there was uh, this cab near the curb, and I says to myself, oh, maybe I better take it home in my condition, you know, and a guy says... A guy? Who? A guy says, excuse me, sir, did you drop this ring? Who was he? I don't remember. It's, it's all so mixed up. So for absolutely no reason, somebody gives you a ring and then takes you home. Yeah. I think that's how it happened. Why, Eddie? So they could hang the frame on me. Somebody said, don't you worry about a thing, Mr... Mr... Mr. Who? Uh, like Sim... Simpkins. No, uh, uh, Hop Hopkins. Hopkins. Yeah. Okay, Eddie. Time to go home. Oh, you mean you're taking me back to jail? For just a little while, Eddie. I hope. Yeah, but we don't need no driver. Police. This the garage Joe Paulson drove out of? Yeah. It's funny, the cop will come by a couple of days ago to talk to me about poor Joe. Well, I read where he gets killed in the stick-up, too. Joe Paulson. What do you know about him? Oh, Joe's kind of a regular guy. 
family man. And the night he was killed. Well, what can I tell you? Only what I told the other cop. According to his trip ticket, he picks up a fare at Sheridan and Madison. Sheridan and Madison? He's hit a cab line there every night. That's for Luigi's restaurant, you know. Okay, okay. So he picks up his fare. Where does he go? Uh, 87 Barclay. 87 Barclay? I was just there. That's where they live. Yeah? Who? Yeah, never mind. Yeah, but, but he never got there. How do you know? Because of what it said on his trip sheet. He makes the pickup at 1030, right? You're telling it. From Luigi's to 87 Barclay is a good half an hour. Even late at night with no traffic. So? So? The cops, you guys, you say he was killed at 1045 or thereabouts. And he's found at 499 Sheridan, just not quite halfway. You got that trip sheet? You know I got it. Law says we got to keep him at least a year. They're all far away in this cabinet. I remember his by heart on account of what happened. That was his last fair. Mm. So the thing had to happen while they were still in the cab. Hey, that's funny. What's funny? The chip sheet. It's gone. How can it be gone? Well, it ain't here. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That figures. Well, what are you saying? Well, why does it figure? Why would anybody want to steal a trip sheet? Because that trip sheet is worth maybe a quarter of a billion bucks. Oh, hi, Lieutenant Davis. Eddie, you want to get the people who killed Sergeant Gomez? I don't want anything for Sergeant Gomez. Okay, I've been through it all with the commissioner and everybody. We have evidence, but it doesn't exist. Huh? A witness who disappears. A taxi cab driver's trip sheet that's missing. A deposition with a signature that might or might not be a forgery. The experts can't agree. Oh, them guys never can. So all we have is you, Eddie. And I want you to make a phone call. You're going to speak to a Mrs. Arthur Drake. Who? Mrs. Arthor Drake. The, 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 the wife of that uh, billionaire big shot? Yeah. Why do you want me to talk to her? Because, Eddie, you were framed to cover up the murder of Joe Paulson. And he was killed to cover up what I can only figure out as another murder. That's why nobody's seen him. Arthur Drake, that's Judy's old man. Eddie, Judy... Great. Now, wait, she, she, she's really a sweet kid, Lieutenant. Look, wait a minute. My, 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 my head is clear. It's coming back to me, clear as a bell. Drake. Drake. Oh, man, that's the broom that sweeps the cobwebs clean. I. Oh, now, 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 listen. I ran out of Judy's pad down the street. There's a cab. A guy stops me. He says, Hey, you dropped your ring. You're sick? Let me take you home. Yeah, yeah. I says, on. I'll take that cab. He says, You can't. It's taken. And he's right. I look inside. Two guys are asleep on the back seat. One of them is Mr. Drake. Asleep or dead? I don't know. I know they're on the back seat. Are you sure one of them's Mr. Drake? I'm positive. How? Because I just seen his picture in Judy's place. That gray hair, the white mustache. I'd know him anywhere. Okay, Eddie, you have to work for us now. Me? Work for the cops? Yeah. And here's what you have to do. Well, Mr. Judson, you said on the telephone that you were a witness to a certain event. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was. Hmm. Uh, please, be seated. Oh, thank you. And, uh, continue. Has the gentleman arrived, Frank? Yes, he's about to begin. Oh, please, don't let me interrupt. Well, about 10 to 11 on the night of October 28th, I uh, turned the corner onto uh, Sheridan near Desmond, and I uh, seen his cab with a bunch of people around it. So many at that hour of the night ain't usual for the neighborhood. Yes, continue, Mr. Judson. Well, I was supposed to be the one who killed the guy that drove that cab. Haven't you been in jail? No, oh, I've been let go. The DA says he don't have a case against me. But the gun, the ring. Circumstantial evidence. But I seen the cabbie dead on the back seat. And also Mr. Drake. And you folks standing around. Oh, this is a ridiculous accusation. Who would believe it? Okay, you got rid of the cabbie's trip sheet. You bought off the doorman at Luigi's, but you can't take care of the whole restaurant. People know you were there. How did you get home? Benjamin, my regular chauffeur, drove us. Now, you bought him off, too, plus the hoods who knocked off Albert Gomez. But it's no good. Uh, do you wish to be bought off, too? Soon you'll be buying off the whole world. It won't help. You're going to have to produce old Mr. Drake. 
And you can't do it. How much do you want? Nothing. I just think you better give yourselves up. He's mad. This gentleman is very dangerous. Kill him. <laughs> what a pharaoh's daughter you would have made. Evidently, he's seen through everything. There's no other way. Oh, yes. Oh. There is another way. It's that police, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Davis? That's right. And I think we got it all down. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Drake, the other way would have been for you to laugh at him. Deny everything. But I guess it takes more to being a real pharaoh's daughter than just being born rich. <laughs> oh, they don't make them like they used to anymore. Even then, bravado, true bravado, could have saved them. But the plot was too far flung. Too many people, too many conflicting interests. And, of course, Lenore claimed she had fallen under Frank's malignant influence. And he made exactly the same counterclaim. Thieves, as you know, must always fall out. But we shall stick together, always. And I shall return in just a few moments. those who feel it's their privilege to rule the earth and everyone on it. Ancient kings and even modern dictators have held the absolute power of life and death. But their success depends on how judiciously and cleverly they do it. Our cast included Jack Grimes, Ian Martin, Joan Shea, Nat Poland, and Jordan Charney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Listerine Lozenges. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>